Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. Over the last 13 years, I've purchased a lot of gear. And in that time, I've bought a lot of gear that I regret. I've experienced that dreaded buyer's remorse. In today's video, I wanna share with you all the mistakes I've made, all the regrets I've made, so you don't have to make them as well. All right, the very first one that I wanna share and it's this contraption I have in front of me. I did waste a bit of money here. What is this? This is a flash setup to go on your long lens. And when I started in bird photography, I saw all these amazing photos and all these amazing photographers, and they all had this contraption on top of their camera. They were all using flash, or so I thought. And so me being a novice, I thought, well, I need to buy a flash, and I need to buy this better beamer, and, and then I'll be able to take great photos as well. So that's exactly what I did. I bought all this gear. I might've spent $500 and that was a lot of money at the time expecting this to improve my photos instantly. And so I've got the gear all excited. I've put it on my camera. I've gone out into the field and then the reality struck me. I had no idea what I was doing. I did not know how to use flash. I didn't know how to set shutter speeds. I didn't know about ETTL, manual, the strength. It just overwhelmed me to be honest and I really struggled and I failed. And because I hated that experience, I just didn't enjoy going out with a flash. And I thought, well, I actually prefer my photos without a flash. Is it just me? Am I wrong? But it, regardless, I never really used a flash. And in all my years, I've only ever used it a handful of times. Now I have taken a few nice shots using flash, such as this pink robin, but they are very few and far between. And even to rub salt in the wounds, the first flash I bought was actually a cheap Chinese flash and it died on me. So I actually went out and bought a much better Canon flash thinking, no, no, I'm definitely gonna use flash. Now I've got this Canon flash and unfortunately I didn't change anything. It was just really a waste of money. But, you know, I've got it there, I guess, if I need it. If I happen to go into a dark rainforest or photographing birds at night, flashes still, still come in handy, and I'm sure many of you enjoy your flash. My advice would be, you don't have to have a flash to enjoy wildlife photography. However, if you do use flash, watch lots of YouTube videos, spend lots of time learning about your shutter speed and your strength. So when you go into the field, you don't suffer like I did. Now the next regret I have, and I've mentioned this a number of times, but that's putting filters in front of your lens. So often people use UV filters. This here is a polarizer filter, I think, but UV filters are very common and people put them on their lens because they don't want to scratch the front element of their lens. However, I did that when I started. I bought a UV filter. I think it might've been $100. I've put it on my lens. I've then started to take some shots and I had all these wavy lines and the images just looked weird. I was confused. I thought the lens was faulty. But in the end, for whatever reason, I can't remember why, I took the UV filter off and it was night and day. The UV filter was interfering with my photos and I've never used one since. I guess for me, my logic is Canon or whoever creates the lenses have calibrated this for the glass that's in it. They haven't calibrated it for an additional piece of glass on the end. And these glass elements are often very expensive. So it doesn't make any sense to me to then whack an additional piece of glass on the front. If you're worried about scratching it, get a lens hood, put the lens hood on there. In the thousands of hours I've spent in the field, I've never scratched the front element. The lens hood's always protected it. So my advice would be is to remove that UV filter and not use it. So my next regret, and it's probably my most expensive, and it was when I upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark IV. This camera cost me close to 5,000 Australian dollars. And as soon as I started using that camera, I instantly had buyer's remorse. The 5D 4 was a 30 megapixel camera released I think in 2016 it was Canon's premium body just under their 1D series and I had extremely high expectations when I bought that camera. So why did I have those high expectations? Well it all stems from my previous experience. My very first camera this 40D which I have in front of me great camera but when I upgraded I went to the Canon 7D which was a massive improvement over this. It had 18 megapixels I think it had eight or nine frames per second. It was just a far superior camera. And I was in love with that camera. I used it for years. I think I actually ended up having two of them because I killed them with salt water. And when I upgraded, I went from the 7D to the Canon 5D Mark III. And I loved that camera. The 5D Mark III was one of my favorite cameras I've ever owned. The image quality was just sensational. I loved the feel of it. In fact, I still distinctly remember probably one of my very first shots I took with that camera was this Blackwing still flying. I remember looking at it going, this is incredible. And I loved that camera and I used it for a number of years. But when they released the 5D Mark IV, it had 30 megapixels. So the 5D 3 was 22. 
and I just expected the autofocus. I expected to have this big jump again when I upgraded. So I outlaid the close to 5,000, which was a lot of money at the time, expecting this big improvement. I got the 5D4, put it on my lens, I've gone out, and I instantly felt that buyer's remorse because I preferred using the 5D3. I actually preferred the experience of my older camera. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but the 5D4 just felt a bit different. Even though it was supposed to be superior, I just didn't really enjoy using it all that much. Yes, I loved the sensor. The sensor was definitely an improvement. I got lots of really good shots, but I always felt that camera was a bit underwhelming. And when I reflect on it, I think, was that sensor worth the 5000 And in all honesty, I don't think it was. So the important lesson I took away from that is when people ask me whether they should upgrade their camera, I ask them, what is your current camera not doing that you want it to do? Will the new camera solve that issue? Will it really be that much better? Will it actually make that much of a difference? We then need to determine whether that upgrade cost is worth that improvement you're expecting to get. But do your due diligence, do lots of research, I guess, to make sure that the camera or the lens you are buying is definitely going to solve the issue or improve what you're wanting. All right, the next purchase, which I really regretted, was one of the older two times converters. This is a modern one, but I, when I first started out, I purchased, I think, a version two, two times, and it was one of the worst purchases I ever made. So when I started out, I had the original 70 to 200, and when I got involved with birding or in starting to enjoy birding, I thought, I need more focal length. So the obvious answer to me was to buy a two times converter, and I forget how much I paid, it might've been $350, $400, which was a lot of money back then, and I just expected it to be instantly like a 400 millimeter lens. And I was very naive. And when I bought that converter, I put it on this lens and the results were shocking. They were terrible. I couldn't get a sharp shot. They were soft and I was despondent. I thought it was me. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. But after some research, I figured out that this old lens and the old converter just didn't go well together and I was never gonna get good results. And that was disappointing and it was a, definitely a waste of money. And so what I did was I sold the two times, I did some proper research and I bought the 405.6, which I absolutely love. If you follow this channel, you know that. This is so sharp, blew that two times and 70 to 200 out of the water. Absolutely love this. And I should have bought that in the first place instead of wasting my money on the converter. Now converters can be useful. My advice is they traditionally work much better on primes. Get the latest version of the teleconverter. The modern lenses seem to work much better, but I think on zooms, you definitely need to stop them down and just be realistic that if you use a two times converter, it's drastically gonna reduce the image quality, it's gonna reduce the light. You're much better off getting a native focal length as opposed to teleconverters, but just do your research first. And if you're still using DSLRs, some DSLRs won't even autofocus with a two times. So make sure you check that. So the next area full of risk and mistakes is buying secondhand gear. And I've had lots of ups and lots of downs. I wanna share with you the mistakes I've made because they're pretty bad, it's all my fault, and hopefully you won't make these mistakes. So my big mistake was not being thorough enough when I was checking the gear before I purchased it. This camera is the original Canon R6. When I got this, I actually swapped it for a really good lens, and I tested it when I met the person, and it worked, and I didn't have really any drama. But when I've got home, I've actually put in a second SD card, and the camera's thrown up an error, and I thought, what's going on? Why is it doing that? Upon closer inspection, all the pins were bent in the second card slot. So it was damaged. I contacted Canon. I think it was $1,000 to repair, which just wasn't worth it. So this camera has only ever had one working SD card slot, which obviously reduces the value and the usability of it. And that's all my fault for not checking the second SD card slot. Uh, the next error which I made was purchasing a lens without seeing it first and without inspecting it and asking explicit questions. Unfortunately, I got this lens and when I got it, I've inspected it and it's got fungus inside the lens. Unfortunately, it's just too expensive to repair. I've not really ever used the lens because of that fungus issue and I just had to take it on the chin. So my advice when buying secondhand gear is you have to ask lots of questions. Ask if anything is not working. Ask if there's any errors. Um, you know, is there any fungus? Are there any scratches? Inspect the gear if you can. If you can buy secondhand gear off a reputable seller with a return policy, that's a good idea. If you can't do that, then just be very, very thorough. And I, the last camera I sold, the person actually requested that we do a FaceTime. So I did a FaceTime with them. 
I turned the camera on, I took photos with it, I sent him the raw files. He was very thorough and that's exactly how I will do it in the future. Okay, moving on to the next regret. It was more of an annoyance than a regret and there's a penalty we pay for pre-ordering gear and being the first to purchase it because we pay a retail price. That's expected, I understand that. In Australia, I don't really have a contact for Canon Australia to get gear before it's released. So I often have to buy it um, to then try it. And that happened with the R6 Mark II. I think I pre-ordered that. I may have paid around 4,400 Australian dollars. I got the camera early, which was great, or upon release. And then I used the camera and I think five days later, I got an email from a supplier saying, the camera's on sale, it's $400 off. So five days after I purchased it, it went on sale, $400 off, and I was so annoyed and a little bit grumpy. I emailed Canon saying, what's going on? And they said, we can't control the price that the retailers put on it. So I just had to wear it that I paid $400 to have that camera five days early. So I think we just need to be aware when we do purchase straight away, that price will drop. If you want to save a few dollars, often just waiting a few months, the um, it will often go on sale and you can get it for a better price. Alrighty, this leads me on to something that I've mentioned before, and that's buying cheap memory cards. When I started, I really didn't have a lot of money to invest in this hobby. So I just bought a uh, relatively cheap 16 gigabyte CF Express card. Um, I thought it was pretty good at the time, but I quickly discovered that it just wasn't big enough. And I'm not sure why I didn't buy a big one at the time. I thought, I'll just get another one. So I got another one, another 16 gigabyte card. And then I've quickly discovered that that wasn't enough. And so I don't know why I did this. I ended up with three 16 gigabyte cards and they all cost me money. In the end, I just bought a really good quality one. I think 128 gigabytes or something like that. And uh, I wish I'd just done that to begin with because I never ended up really using these cards again. They were just a waste of money. So my advice is if you're buying a memory card, try to buy the fastest and the biggest one that you can afford and maybe just stretch a little bit to buy one because you will use it and they will hopefully last you a long time. So I'm very lucky that ProGrade support the channel and they have provided me with top of the range ProGrade cards. I highly um, promote these. I use them. They've never let me down. If you want a 15% discount, there's a link in the description. Unfortunately, it's US only because of the freight costs, um, but you can definitely get a bargain on those SD cards if you need a new one. So my next regret is probably one that you are familiar with, and that's trying to save some money by buying a really cheap version or a cheaper version. And I was trying to save money when I started because a lot of these things are very expensive. The first thing was a tripod. I couldn't believe the price of these tripods. I thought surely a Manfrotto, Manfrotto, Manfrotto tripod would be good. And I bought this cheap, I don't even know what it is, 785B. I don't know why I thought this would be um, applicable for uh, wildlife. I don't even know why I still have it, but I purchased this. The head couldn't handle the weight. I really didn't end up using that tripod. I then bought a... Manfrotto again, uh, monopod. I very rarely ended up using this because I didn't really need it for the light lens that I had. So again, I don't know why I bought it. And the last thing is, this isn't actually it, but I, when I first started, I knew I needed a gimbal once I got a heavier lens. And I bought one of those cheap Chinese ones. It just didn't last. It seized up on me and the bolt went on it. I think I actually might have used two of those before I invested in a proper one. This is an Enduro GHB2. This lasted me, I don't know, maybe eight years before it finally seized up, but I should have just spent the money to begin with. Um, you can get some good uh, cheaper gimbals now. So I think we're just very lucky today to have so much information available via YouTube, reviews on B&H, etc., to help stop us buying this cheap, nasty gear. And that leads me on to the last regret. And this doesn't actually have anything to do with gear. This is more my own personal regret. And that is not taking more photos of my friends and myself out in the field on location when we're having fun doing this amazing hobby. So I've been doing this a long time. I've gone to a lot of places. I've met a lot of wonderful people. And when I reflect, I simply don't have enough photos of those memories. And many of you know I lost my dear friend and mentor, Matt. I've only got a handful of images of us out together in the field. And I absolutely treasure those photos and they bring me a lot of joy. I just wish I had more of them. <laughs> so my advice to you is if you are out with your mates and you are out in the field, take photos of them doing what they love and take photos of yourselves together so you've got that memento to look back on in the future and bring a smile to your face. Okay, so in conclusion, I want you to ask yourself a few questions before you buy your next camera or lens or piece of equipment. A, 
What is your current gear not doing that you think this new equipment will do? Will this new equipment actually deliver on the features and the hype and the promise that it suggests? Is it actually worth the price to get that improvement? Is it gonna solve your issue? Is it gonna make that much of a difference? Be very careful about the features and the hype that surround these products. YouTubers like myself and others, you know, we review all this gear and the marketing makes us wanna purchase the gear, but can it actually deliver? Like the R5 promised 4K, 8K, but then it overheats. So it's important we do our due diligence. Have you done your due diligence? Have you gone onto forums? Have you learnt everything you possibly can about said product? Is there a better alternative? Should you be saving your money and waiting for the next thing to come along? These are all questions we need to ask ourselves. And I think the last one, and probably the hardest one, is do we actually need it? Um, only you can answer that, I suppose. But if we ask ourselves these questions, hopefully we will reduce the probability of getting buyer's remorse, which is what we want to avoid. Um, I enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what products have given you buyer's remorse. Can you relate to anything I've said today? Um, it was definitely a bit of fun and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to all my new members that have joined the channel. If you're not aware for the price of less than a cup of coffee, you can support the channel directly, which I greatly appreciate. I'll have a new calendar coming up soon. Um, obviously, you can give it that thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. But until the next video, take care, happy birding, and see you later.